All right, guys, what is going on? How are you doing? Welcome back to another podcast on the David Hammond Visuals Podcast. This is the first one with a guest. I told you guys we're going to start bringing on guests, and Michael is the first one, and I'm actually super stoked to tell him <laughs> the guy has the USB mic. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's it going? Good, good, good. Michael, yeah, give him a little bit of a kind of context, who you are, what you do, your take with, and it is a photography, videography podcast. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Give him a little spiel, bro. Yeah, so um, I'm a photographer. I've been a photographer since probably, I want to say, since I was like 14-ish. Nice. Bought my first camera. It was a Nikon D3100. Lit. Um, Nikon boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, well, no longer a Nikon boy. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I've been shooting since I was like grade eight, like onward. Nice, bro. Um, recently, I... Uh, have been getting into it a lot more. Um, I, what's it? I'm primarily on Instagram. Yeah, man. Um, there, uh, I've been dabbling with videography and everything, but mostly photography at the moment. Love it. Love it. Yeah, man. And how, uh, uh, you're one year younger, right? No, same age. Really? Yeah. Oh, dude. I don't, I don't. Oh, sorry. That's Haroon. That's the other guy who's one year mm -hmm. younger. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, you look a lot older since last time I saw you. <laughs> That one time in, was it Mexico or whatever? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the wedding, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's sick, man. So, dude, tell him a little bit, because you've been into, well, you've been into photography, videography, or I guess photography longer than I have. That's nuts. Grade eight. So, you're my, you're my age. So that's been about. Yeah. But it's kind of like, it's one of those things where like you dabble with, you kind of like, I don't want to say half-ass, but it's kind of like a <laughs> yeah. hobby. And then yeah. eventually it becomes your like bet, like I actually want to mm -hmm. do this. So, like yeah. for you, when was the, uh, I guess, turning point where you're like, let's actually run this? Probably two three years ago nice nice was probably when i was like really got a lot more hardcore into it yeah dude um I, before that it was like off and on like you said yeah dude i'm gonna pull up the uh if i don't record the visual then you know they won't see but i'm gonna pull up the instagram because i uh yeah yeah no worries ba, ba, ba. so p is your middle name because the instagram yeah. guys is mike p langton so i always yeah. thought like I, did yeah. you do that as like a joke as like plankton yeah. or Okay, yeah. good. I didn't yeah. want to like say that, and you were like, yeah, "No, no motherfucker, that's just that's yeah, my no. name." <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That, that's 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 one hundred percent. Okay, all right. Okay, good. But like, your middle name is actually like something mm -hmm. P. I'm guessing. Okay, yeah, nice. I like yeah. that little. Um, yeah, man. So, like, tell me a little bit about film photography and stuff like that, because Michael actually, as as these guys know, like, I've been really getting to film photography. So, tell me a little bit about like, I guess where you worked at that place, into film, all that stuff. Yeah, so film has been a like a new thing for me recently. I don't know if I yeah. record the visual, so I'm just just in case I do put the visual. Yeah, yeah, no worries, right, guys. Like, dig it. Look at the BNW. I've been telling you guys about the black and look at that. Look at the comp. <laughs> my my guy, look at that. The negative space. Let's get it. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. If you don't take um, a selfie, bro. Oh wait, that's not. Is that you? No, no, no. Oh, I was gonna say, if you don't take a selfie on film, do you really shoot film? But it's yeah, selfies. So. I have, I have one. I have one on. I got a disposable camera that's also black and white. Yo, do you that, like those? How, how, the how disposable are those? cameras. Yeah, are they are they lit? <laughs> okay. Um depends so what you're what you, when you're gonna be using them don't use them for art type of stuff that's the mm. first thing that i've that i because i had one and i'm like i had one uh the disposable one um don't use them for like think about like too hard about your composition and everything right literally right. the best things for those things are that you take them out you're hanging out with friends yeah and just yeah. just shoot yeah that's literally all that i find for I'm wondering though, like, is it the same? I guess it's the same film, like the way you get it. It, it would be the same film. Same it thing? would be okay. the same film, yeah. Nice, especially for. Comes... Yeah. So the the so okay so, um, depending on it depends on the on the the actual disposable camera. Right. So recently, I've been getting into it uh, a lot more. Um, like that, those photos that you just showed were actually like my first roll. Nice. Um, so you're kind of playing around with a lot of different stuff, like a lot of different mentality. Um, as, as when it comes to disposable, the mm -hmm. depends on the disposables you have. So the roll of film that um, was that one that I developed, mm -hmm. they sell disposable cameras with that roll. Right. That, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah. So you can, you can like a little Kodak camera or something like that, like a little like, yeah, is it like yellow, the little yellow one. Not the black and white one, but okay, yeah, gotcha. the type of Kodak would be the, that exact one. And, and um, equivalent type of film would be so for for disposal cameras like Kodak, yeah, um, and the Fujifilm one. So for the Kodak would be 
kind of a lower grade compared to the Ultramax type of film. Okay. So I'm UV. still so new to film, bro. So mm-hmm. like all the, all these words are kind of like I'm like kind of getting it. But so okay. so Kodak Ultramax is kind of like a type of drugstore type of film. Right, right. So the reason why is like it's a cheaper end type of film, but right, it's, right. It's meant so that like you can shoot a lot it's more a, of it. Yeah, it's a consumer film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's what you, I shoot on, guys. <laughs> I'm a consumer the, film guy right now. <laughs> the biggest, the biggest thing, the biggest difference between those films and like like more expensive film is consistency. Right. Okay. Okay. So when you're paying for, say, if you were to get Kodak Portra, sure, which I see a lot of people mm-hmm. get Portra, yeah, you'll be paying for a lot more consistency. And what do you what do you mean by consistency, though? Like, so there can be times where, say, like frame one won't be the exact same as like frame four. As in like you know exposure I mean? or like, yeah, like light leak or yeah, light leaks, exposure type of different stuff. Gotcha. When you come when you have like Portra or like Fujifilm uh, uh, Pro four hundred, stuff like right. that, you would have like a little bit more consistency right, with right. it. Like you could have like a photo set and there would be yeah. that 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 thread. No, dude, mm-hmm. that makes hundred percent sense because when I shoot on but the thing is like as of at least right now, I kinda like that because I like not knowing how it looks, but I yeah. definitely know what you mean because like I'll shoot, let's say, three photos, same lighting, same composition, and yeah. one will be like pitch black, the other will be exactly. like super bright, and the other one has yeah. like a like it's like purple, and I'm like, what exactly. is going on? So exactly. So when you're oh, okay. when you're paying when you're paying for like a little bit higher end film, that's what you're gonna be. That's what you're gonna be looking. For. That makes perfect sense. And like, mm-hmm. how much? Because like, I think the role that I got the Kodak, it just came with the camera. And dude, it was yeah. like, little, speak about this too, man. Because like, I found my dad's camera, and like, there were about four rolls of the Kodak. But bro, they expired in like oh seven. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, so speak about expired film. So with expired film, the biggest thing you want to do is is the the ten year um, exposure rule. Okay. okay shit. So it's kind of like you want to, I think it's, I haven't tested expired, expired film all that much, but I'm pretty sure that for every 10 years, mm-hmm. you want to overexpose it one shot, one, one Inter- step. Interesting. Oh, so okay. it gets darker. Yeah. Older. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. So you want to like, so if you can, if you have exposure compensation on your camera, set it to yeah. like constantly overexposing one shot. Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole role would be a little bit more consistent, but like, you'll, that makes sense, dude. Yeah. Cause quite a few of them were uh, dark mm-hmm. and, and, mm-hmm. and the EV, the exposure was right. Yeah. Like dead smack center. That makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. So it was 07. So yeah. What is that? Like thir- thir- yeah, about 13 years ago. You would, yeah. So you would want to do about one stop. You That's can maybe, so you can cool. maybe go like, like, half a stop or a third of a stop that's interesting like, to kind of dial it in a little bit more but you just you should be okay with one stop this is, yeah this is six like i'm i'm literally like i'm soaking all this up this is really yeah. this is valuable how's the um uh, so is it like popular for people to shoot expired film is it not popular like what are your takes on that hey, it's like <laughs> if you can get your hands on it it's not like people aren't gonna be searching out expired film Okay. That's the biggest thing. That, okay. if that's if that's what you're trying to ask. If that okay. people aren't really going to be like going like, straight for expired oh, film. They don't really care. Like it's not like yeah. a, a valuable thing. Yeah, no. It's more something. like it's more like kind of like if you have it, you have it. Yeah, if you have it, you have it or if you're thinking like, you know what? It'd be kind of cool to try shooting on expired okay. film. Okay. Go and then you'll try to find someone who has like a bunch of expired film right. and then you'll someone may mark it up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes it's sense. expired and people will want to people will pay for it. Okay. Because it's a different type of look. So yeah. So how how is the look? So you're saying as far as like it will be a little underexposed. Like how's mm-hmm. the look? Like is it is it grainier? Is it because I've only shot on the expired rolls. I I'm getting yeah. uh, new rolls in, but like yeah, I, you know, there's there it, there's a there's a grain wouldn't be that much affected because the way okay. that the way that grain acts on film is the way that the light it will react with the light. All right. So. All right. If you have an expired film, the grain may be a little bit different. Okay. But generally, the grain kind of stays a little bit more the same as if it was the other types of 400 ISO or 200 okay. ISO and stuff like that. Um, the main difference is color casting. Hmm. Hmm. So you may you may see like over the time that it expired, possibly like a little bit of light got into the canister. You know. Okay. Okay. It, like say like a tiny tiny bit or something. You got like a light leak in it somehow, or like as the years go on that type of film may start i don't know breaking down the tiniest little bit mm. and you'll see that like on the on the like a certain set of rolls there might be like a purple cast or something. okay the hues are a little bit different you're yeah. saying so yeah. maybe that's why people because like I'm, I'm trying to wonder like why would people mm-hmm. 
you know, want to shoot maybe yeah. expired opposed to not. So it's something mm. to do with the hues, the color. Another, another thing is that the reason why people would want to want to do expired film yep. would be because you won't be able to get it new anymore. Okay. So like there could be, there's some, I think Kodak just brought back Ektachrome recently okay. in the past, like two or three, four years. Um, you'd be able to get expired Ektachrome right now. Interesting. And Ektachrome is more like a slide film. So it's not color negative. It's color positive. Man, holy so, crap. you know a lot bro. yeah so yeah actually before we keep going any so further, tell, tell them about like the camera like you work at like a camera store like like how do you know this yeah like how do you know this <laughs> <laughs> so i work at a camera store at the moment nice and we sell film and we sell film cameras and we develop film nice where so is that? Where, where is the place in guelph okay because like i like how is it from what i know it's not like extremely easy to buy film cameras or yeah, no, it... we we sell we sell quite a bit actually. Okay. In Guelph, there's a there's a big like like following. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, if like if you want me to pick you up like another like a different film camera while I'm back in Guelph, just let me know. But how, yeah, how does that work? Like, so are they all used film cameras? They are all got, used film that cameras that people have just sold, like sold to, to the us, store, yeah. and then yeah. you guys obviously sell. Yeah, when we and we get a decent amount of people that will buy it. I have, oh, dude, I can imagine. Holy yeah. crap! Like, yeah. So like we'll get we'll get a bunch of different like the, okay the cool thing the cool thing about film mm -hmm. is that you can get a really good camera mm -hmm. for very low price right right that's what I've heard so there was a camera that we had in uh, what was it a it was a Minolta camera but with some really really nice glass nice so think of like the L series type of mm -hmm. film glass mm -hmm. but like no, not L series like that's another good. type another type of company like that yeah, yeah yeah um and some of the glass that came with that was just such nice quality nice. like we got in that was a a 21 millimeter f i think f4 but it wouldn't mm -hmm. go any lower okay um the reason why though is because it, it had like this giant front element and if it were to go any lower like in a lower in aperture you'd start seeing distortion on the photos interesting so a lot of times you'll get a lot of really really good glass and like a really good camera for like a cheap price like i have a nikon fe at the moment for my film camera like mm -hmm. i'm probably never going back to nikon except for that film camera right and this thing is like a beast really like the the kit the lens is i probably not going to buy another lens for it i just got a 50 millimeter 1.8 mm -hmm. which is great yeah, yeah um yeah. and honestly like i i love it like as you saw in some of the photos like it shoots sharp photos like, dude, it's like dude man that's i thought it was digital i wouldn't have mm -hmm. thought it was film yeah so like what's your take on that though like is it is it full like manual like do you manual focus that are you fully like, manual you, you're fully killer manual. i just manual focus so, on yeah you. <laughs> i'm just i'm just standing there for like a good 10 to 20 seconds just being like hey hold that position for like a good little bit <laughs> well, i've done that so many times yeah. Bro, yeah it films one of those things where like you're doing it for portraits bro either they love it the people or they're pissed yeah. off because they're like for fuck's sakes bro like i've been here for yeah. like a minute straight get yeah. the focus exactly like the wow. photo the first photo the one of my roommate andy where he's yeah, just yeah, yeah. chilling in the in the the kitchen i'm just like hey hold that position yeah, just yeah. for like a couple more seconds you can tell by his face bro it's yeah like, exactly he's just, just like, like can you just get you just stop please <laughs> <laughs> exactly That's he's just funny. like just 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 stop <laughs> Yeah, uh, dude, what's your take on what was that shot on? Like, was that like a 400 ISO? Like, yeah, so that was what's called Ilford XP2 um, 400 ISO. Yeah, okay. Would so, you say that's kind of like a standard, like, go? Yeah, like what I'm thinking is like 400, you can't go wrong. Can't you know? go wrong, 400. It's can't good go for wrong. it's good for in the like regular daylight. Yes, yes, it's good for a little bit low light, not super good. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would think of personally, I think of 400 ISO as like you shoot from nine to five. Yeah, okay okay yeah. during the day but yeah, i guess a little bit of golden depends on like um the lenses man because like i exactly. have two lenses the, the 50 and i i believe they're like two aperture one eight yeah. like they're, they're pretty low a 28 yeah. and a 50 so like that's never really yeah. been an issue and like yeah. speak of this too man like film cameras from what i know they're full frame aren't they oh yeah yeah 35 right? Which, yeah right yeah which is like wouldn't that kind of mean then like you could get better stuff than like a crop sensor like as far as like yeah, low light yeah, goes because yeah, like no, no, i know no, yeah. right because i'm yeah. noticing like this would not be able to shoot because i have a 50 mil and this 50 there like yeah and i'll notice that that'll be better yeah well th the thing with the the um the difference is when you compare a uh, APS-C sensor to like a full frame actual camera mm. um a 50 mil on, a, on an APS-C isn't going to be a 50 mil on right, a right. It'd, be, it'd be 80 yeah yeah yeah, yeah about the 1.6 crop yeah yeah so you are going to be dealing with a lot of different distortion. Yeah. So 
a if you're going to be using a 50 mil on an APS-C, it's like using an 80. Yes. So yes. the the like the the depth of field that you're going to be getting might be a lot greater. Very with true. 50 mil on an AP, on APS-C compared to like. Yeah, what I meant was more so like the aperture. Like they're both around like the yeah. same, oh, like yeah, yeah, one yeah. eight aperture. And I've noticed like the light capability would be a oh, bit yeah. greater on the, uh, which is really cool. Like yeah, so I have I also have an a Sony A seven S. Nice. And I know this is different going down to like color science and everything. Right, right. But with a full frame type of view, you do get uh, a greater dynamic range. Yes. So you will start seeing things like with an APS C, you might see like maybe not the fact that like like low light and everything may be different but you'll see that the oh the dynamic range absolutely to, yeah oh dude no fully aware of that like i i can't wait to get a full frame bro that's after mm -hmm. this guy this guy's mm -hmm. done its thing bro but like bro mm -hmm. are you a big you're, i guess you're like a sony guy you're not really a canon guy per se yeah i'm kind of a sony right now it makes sense bro sony is yeah. like <laughs> canon slacking on a lot of things bro but yeah. like i have faith in them i'm, I'm hoping like a the, 60 mark 3 or something eventually the, in the future did you see the specs for the EOS R5? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, but bro, nah. I'm call me old fashioned, bro. Like I want a DSLR. Like I'm mm -hmm. waiting. I feel like mm -hmm. for like a 5D5 or like a 6D3. Yep. And when? When? I don't know. But like, yeah. I want if, a DSLR. If they, here's my prediction for it right now. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna come out with. I think the fact that they put that they gave the Canon EOS R5 a 45 megapixel sensor and the possibility of 8K video. Right. 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 The fact that the 1DX Mark III right, dude, only I has 5.5K. I was literally just thinking about that. So many people mm -hmm. put in pre-orders for the 1D3 and then they're yeah. like, oh, bet the R5 is coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, shit. So I think, I think they're still going to come out with like maybe one. I think that the night they're going to come out with a 5D. Right. Maybe. I don't, I don't know if they're going to come out with a 60 because they have an RP now. That right, type right, of right. camera, which would be geared to like sixty shooters. Right, right. Um, but they may come out with one more five D, and then I think it's just mirrorless. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think that's where it's going. It is. No, it is. It is going yeah. mirrorless. I just, bro. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if it's like a weird thing, bro. It's just like a DSLR, oh, yeah. like as far as like you know robustness, bro. Like yeah. this thing, I've abused it, bro. We're like, I have a little tiny mirrorless. Oh, yeah. Like, not this is like super fancy at all, but like, yeah, bro. The fragile factor, like, I don't know. Oh yeah. Man. Oh yeah. But uh, no man, pros and cons to both, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what the future holds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, dude, that's awesome. So how long have you been working at the camera? Uh, Just store? this year. Nice. Just uh, this year. Speak a little bit about that. So like you're out in Guelph, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's where you reside. That's where school is, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm there for accounting at the moment and everything. Nice. And then I'm nice. working at like the camera store on the side and everything. Nice. So. In, in Guelph. In Guelph. Yeah. And then, you, so you say you live like locally where I am, like Ajax. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's where I'm from. That's not I, like I just moved here to Ajax a couple weeks ago, dude. I'm probably mm -hmm. like five minutes from your house, and you're here for reading week then. Yeah, for reading week for and the rest so of the week. You're gone in like a few days, five. Four, I'm right? gone Saturday ish, I think. So. That's sick, man. Yeah, Damn. that's that's awesome. So when you worked at the uh, camera shop, did you have like how much did you learn? I feel like you learned a fuck ton at that camera shop. I learned or a lot about film. Okay, that's the biggest thing where I learned. Okay, I learned some stuff about digital because when I was doing research for my camera, I, I look over there because my camera's just right over yeah, there. Yeah, no um, they, uh, they, I know a lot of the stuff that we sell. Mm -hmm. So things like the Lumix G, G7 or G85, possibility of getting like a Lumix uh, GH5, things like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Fuji Film XT3, yeah, yeah. things like that. So I know a lot about those, those types of cameras. Mm -hmm. I learned a crap ton about film. Nice. So I can tell. I learned, I've I've never met someone who knows that much about film. I learned I, this from, uh, ironically, from another guy named Mike at the store who's like in his 70s and everything. And of he's course, just, bro. So he's like the, like when someone brings in a camera, he knows almost everything about it. And I'm just sitting there like listening Absorbing. to everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's really cool, man. Do you plan, so when you go back to Guelph, do you plan to like go back there, be back there? Like after, when I come back from reading week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So nice. I'm still working there for, like the rest of the school year and everything so that's dude that is like the dream job for uh <laughs> yeah. for like part-time oh, yeah. or something that's that's really cool yeah. not too many people can say they've done that especially at tw you're not 22 yet you're 21 still 21 yeah right yeah, now. okay cool so but yeah no from there and then after that it's like i'd probably not gonna be able to still work there because i'm not gonna be in guelph yeah, you're not, oh yeah, yeah no it's just like yeah. a part thing dude that is so cool so you're my age did you mm -hmm. so then if you know let's say you went at 18 you're in year four right now yeah yeah. Right. And then so you're 
I'm not in school, so I'm trying to like I'm trying to like paint the picture. So like yeah. you're in, you're going back to semester two, correct? After this. I will not. I'm in, no, no, I'm you're, in you're my in semester. second semester. My bad, yeah. my bad, bro. My girlfriend. Yeah. I should know this shit, bro. Come on. It's because <laughs> you know some people, bro, like she does like summer programs. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. I'm I'm like Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I know people that do like full full year long stuff. Yeah, and so I'm like so. semester one, two, three, four, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, cool, man. No. So, like, what would you say as far as so you're in business managing mm-hmm. management? Is mm-hmm. when that's done, I, I guess a lot of it's going to be playing up to ear. But like, would you yeah. see yourself with your new knowledge and stuff? Like, where do you see, I guess, the photo video routes? And of course, you know, so much of it is up to air. But like, what would you like? I guess. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm kind of doing like accounting. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I'm done technically this year. Yeah. Uh, ish, and then I'm going to be possibly going back for one more semester to get a marketing minor. And then possibly continuing with that, like the marketing stream and then continue with photography, graphic design, video, everything. I'm debating going to school. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's that's still awesome. Up in the air, so wait, you were saying you want to go to school for photo and video? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. But I don't, I don't know if I'm going to, that's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, Cause I mean, I'm, I'm thinking like, you could, like, I feel like you yeah. can learn a lot, you know, yeah. <laughs> by yeah. yourself, bro. That's like you don't really thing. need school for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. So you were, you were just saying you were editing up some photos as far yeah. as like, uh, tell us about that, man. Like, is that like, is that like landscape stuff? Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. right. It's okay. So last night, um, I was out with some friends and everything, oh, right? the, yeah. the thing I, yeah, bro. I was at yeah. a dinner and like, yeah. I came oh, back. No worries. Um, oh, okay. actually we're doing that again tonight. If you do want to join us, um, Ooh. just down by like, well, we're going getting food first and then going and doing it. Okay. So the, the premise is, is that, um, Okay, so you know steel wool, fine grain steel wool, okay? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the type of stuff that you would use when cleaning up piping, things like that. Mm-hmm. So the thing with that type of wool is that it burns very, very hot and very, very bright. You know how like in high school, you'd your teacher would burn a bit of magnesium and then they would say, look away and because it would burn super, super bright. Okay. So think of that, but not, not to that scale. Right, right. But so when you light steel wool, because it's so fine, it right burns very very bright and because right. they're so because it is so fine yeah it flecks off really easily okay okay so what we did is we grabbed some like cooking twine mm-hmm. uh so like the stuff you'd wrap a turkey with mm-hmm. um a stainless steel whisk mm-hmm. tie the twine to the whisk mm-hmm. uh grab some steel wool put it yeah exactly put it into the put it into the whisk and then light it up and then mm-hmm. start spinning it yeah, yeah, yeah so when that happens you start to get like a bunch of like sparks everywhere yeah can i can i show them that uh the photo inspo that you sent me yeah yeah no no actually no i took that i took those photos oh oh, you oh those sick those are those are photos those were like test runs that we did nice yeah go ahead we took some better ones steel wool photography i've seen some stuff on that we're like i kind of want to zoom in on that let's see yeah Yeah, so that was like an okay one we were having a bunch of problems with that one um mainly because we were still dying dialing in everything Yeah, yeah yeah the whisk started breaking so we had to start like the the actual whisk part came out of the handle so right. we just decided to say fuck it to the handle and threw the right. handle away and then tied up the tied up the the whisk to an, the actual yarn so That's the ones cool. that we got this this time around i wonder if i can i'm adding them right now let me see if i can do you think i could share my screen real quick or yeah go ahead man am I, I able to I, I think there's a button that says share screen in like the middle the yeah. green green button yeah okay so uh desktop one Again, this is the first time, guys, I'm doing this whole yeah. Zoom call stuff. So, no, it's going well, though. This is sick. Wait, let me just see if this works. Yep. Uh, oh, I think I need to, I think I need to, like, exit the call and go back into it. But we're, well, okay. The one really? Later. Are you sure? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's no, see. No, no, you is should this... be able. No, dude. I... Sure. No, 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 dude. You oh, click... are yeah, you yeah. seeing it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're working on at the moment. Lit. So this one, we were kind of, so we were, we were playing around a lot with like, um, like longer exposure, things like that. Mm-hmm. So this one, we were like, we usually would do stuff where it'd be like this, where you would like just spin it in a circle. Right. And it would go everywhere. Right. We tried doing it above our head. So it would kind of create like a shower. Are you guys wearing like goggles or something? Like I'm afraid this is gonna like get in your eye. So okay, so the way that it works, um, okay, you should wear. We didn't wear all the like, (laughs) uh, like enough safety stuff. Right. Um, but the way it works is kind of because you're you're in the epicenter of like spinning it. Right. Right. You see, you see, you see how when I'll go back to this one, you see how there's like this area right here. Right. Right. Where there's barely any sparks. Yeah. So your physics kind of 
dictates that you will get like the least amount of sparks. Right, right. Me behind the, the camera, hurricane. especially especially when I was doing this one. Oh my I was, gosh. I was like, sparks are coming at me at the moment. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what to do. So close your eyes. I, I want to redo this one and getting closer so that it looks like the sparks are actually going over the camera. Right. And I can kind of take a portrait of my friend Pino, who's the one spinning it. Right. The only problem is that we're going to have to do like a longer exposure. So they're not going to be able to stay so close. So, Dude, that's sick, man. Are you guys doing that like local? See, I've experimented with this stuff. Not steel wool, but like use yeah. an LED light. And you yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we were kind of doing like a lot of like night stuff and everything. We went to like the Greenwood Conservation Area, things like yep, that. Yep, and yep, some yep. portraits and whatnot. And this is just at like a Tim Hortons and everything. Awesome. So it's kind of like we were kind of just testing yeah, out different things getting a bit of everything yeah so here let me let me see how do i go back to this should be just the button at the bottom or stop sharing there, there you we go. go sick so yeah that's what we're working on right now but we're going to be doing that again tonight is it just you two you and the friend me yeah me and that was me and him that night but tonight we're getting more people so what we're thinking what i'm thinking maybe doing is doubling up on the on the steel wool mm. And then try getting more sparks or you can possibly get like copper wool and everything. And then they'll burn a different color. So that's interesting. I saw, I don't know if you know a guy named Chris Howe on, on YouTube. Yeah, I do. I do know. Yeah. I, I saw it like, yeah. this time ago, but it was like steel yeah. wool photography. And I saw like yeah. that exact picture of like, yeah, yeah. That's really, that's so we were trying, we, we were honestly like, it was, it happened. The first photo, the one that I sent you, um, we were like just hanging out and everything. We're like, yeah, yeah, to go yeah. take some photos and we're like, yeah, let's go do it. So, and then we were thinking, what type of photos do we want to take right now? It's like, well, we can go buy some steel wool from like the hardware store right now, mm -hmm. if you want, grab a whisk and everything. And then they were all like, yeah, I'm down. So we started to go and do it. So I'm just trying to like grasp it. So like steel wool is like, that's not what you're holding. That's what's wrapped no, no, around. No. Yeah, that, right. That's, that's what's in the whisk. You're holding that's, a string. Okay. And yeah. that's what's burning off and like creating exactly. that. Exactly. Okay, so you, you, you wrap that around a string and it burns off, and just, but you need something to spin. You would want to put it into like a stainless steel whisk. Okay. That's, that way it stays there, like, and you don't, it doesn't stay attached to the, oh, to the twine I understand. so the twine doesn't burn. That makes so, sense. Yeah. That's smart because the whisk mm -hmm. is like holding it yeah. together. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, and then by the end of it, by the end of your exposure, you're the, all, the, all the steel wool is burned off. So, so how long you, is your exposure time? Are you doing like 10 second exposures or like one of them? Yeah. 10 to 15. Nice. Um, the one where he was kind of doing like a figure eight, I was like, okay, you're going to spin it for a lot longer this time. Cause you mm. have a bigger bit of wool. Mm. So, was, so that one was about 20 to 30 uh, wow. exposure and everything. Wow. So My I've friend been was saying still. <laughs> oh yeah. I recently, I've been like, I we're not recently, but like I've been gearing a lot for like long exposures and stuff. So yeah, I've dude. been like, so in the summer I work in, or in the summer I work in the Algonquin park. Nice. Yeah. You told so, me about that. That's mm -hmm. man. You literally are living the dream. You work in Algonquin <laughs> in a camera store. Yeah. So I've been playing around. I got like my remote shutter and everything and yep. set up like a 45 minute exposure, things like that. Four so. two five or four D five. Four D five. My gosh. Bro. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to get the stars and stuff. Eh? Exactly. Do, you, do you have any, uh, night? I swear on your Instagram page, you have some, like I did, I did, but I took them off because it didn't really flow well with my Instagram. Ah, uh, dang. Yeah. But I, I have, I have them like in my archive and everything, but I can, I can actually probably share my screen. Yeah, man. Quick. Yeah. If you, if you can pull it up, cause I feel like I'm going to put the visual aspect anyway. So yeah. So here, it let makes me, sense. Let's see if I can. Okay. This is the, I'll, I'll actually show you the very first one that I sure, did. Sure. Sure. Cause Algonquin's the place to do it, man. Like this was the very, very first one that I ever did. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So What's that that's, orange light coming from? Is that's that actually coming car? from a campfire. Wow. Very interesting. Yeah. Very and the cool. funny thing is that campfire was probably like super dead. Um, eh? Not like, super dead, but it was, it was probably about 10 feet away. Okay. And when I remember when taking this shot, if you were there by the, by like these trees, these were pitch black. Yeah. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. These were absolutely pitch black. But that's, because, that's really nice, actually. Yeah. How long was the exposure on this? This was 45 minutes. Wow. So I was like, I, wow. we, were all, we were all at the campfire. So I was Except, just like, here, I'm going to set up my camera. That's awesome. Point it here, set it like a timer for 45 minutes on I've, my phone, let it go. And mm -hmm. yeah. That's, so you put it on like bulb mode, I guess, on your camera. Yeah, exactly. And you just, exactly. you just let it run. Exactly. And you have the shutter. Like you didn't press the, uh, the like you didn't touch your camera. You have a, a remote shutter or something. Yeah, yeah right? I, have, I have a remote shutter. Yeah, I got to so get I one did of those. That. 
So it, it honestly, once you start doing it, it's a lot more fun. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. cause dude, I, the longest exposure I've done is like, I actually, you know what? I kind of want to, Oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to try to, Here, I'll stop sharing. You might be able to share it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me find it first. Cause like, I don't want to yeah. just pull up some like random nudes or something. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Um, okay. Well, you know, okay. Well, think, 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 think Alberta. Okay. You know what? No, I do have it. I can go to the website and pull it up there. It's going to be mm-hmm. small, but like, you know, you'll see it. The longest exposure I think I've done on bold mode is around like three minutes. Okay. So yeah. Pretty short. Well, what did you, what did you, what did you do for the three yeah, minutes? Yeah. 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 That's what I want to, let me pull that up here. Outdoor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let me, okay. I can share my screen. Where are we at? Okay, yeah. I highly suggest if you're if in the summer, if you're going, even in the winter, honestly, cause Mew Lake's pretty open. Um, there is like campsites and everything that you can go to and like, just say like spend a night. Yo, can you see this? Yeah, I can. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, right here, I wish I could pull it up big, man. Like it's just a yeah. little tiny square. So you're probably not going to get a good glimpse. So that was a three, that was a three minute exposure. That was about a three minute exposure. Again, it looks okay. crap on this thing, but like, yeah, man. Um, yeah. so of the clouds and I wanted this massive whisk. Okay. This yeah. was actually in Alberta and like these clouds are moving quick. So I noticed like, let yeah. me capitalize on that. And yeah. so I would say three to four minutes, but, um, mm-hmm. where else is a nice, do I have the train track one? But dude, I've never done. Yeah, um, these are dope. Yeah, man. I, I'm trying to. I go really back go I... back up to the top real quick. Yeah, man. I want to do where like the beach where you have California, a, like, bro. Yeah. That was you have, beach. like but I want to set up like a pretty dense ND filter. Right. And then do a three minute exposure. Oh, the know? water, eh? Yeah. Dude, long exposures, especially with outdoors, it's just they go hand in hand. Yeah. Like that's awesome. I'm just trying to okay. So here's another one. This is like literally what do you think the exposure was on this guy of the water? I'm guessing 45 seconds. Not e- bro, a second. <laughs> really water moves so fast bro like, yeah you'd think right like you're like oh, yeah. I need. um this but is in not that a- in that in that type of thing you could set set there your go. aperture up to like 22 very true just completely- that was- oh that's only that's not even a, a second no so this one believe it or not was actually probably like five eight ten seconds only because okay. it, was blue, it was blue hour there was like no light oh okay, so yeah, see how bright it looks bro it was almost pitch yeah. black wow right? power of long yeah. exposures eh oh yeah um I feel like this is like a humble brag. We're showing the shots. No, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to find all the long exposures. Um, so here's another one. Really cool. That's me. That was actually oh, yeah, a self portrait. I really yeah. like, I wish I was showing you these in full quality, but we had a yeah. little bit of the miss there. I'm this, guessing you had like a remote shutter set to like a certain no, timer. Bro, bro, bro. I don't have any remote. So this is literally, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm touched. So thankfully, um, I mean, you have a Sony, this touch screen. Yeah. So like I could touch the oh, screen. Yeah. There's like a half second delay of when you yeah. touch it. So it doesn't yeah. move. I run, I scurry across here. Really? And then I maybe, let's say it's like a, a three to five sec, not even three second exposure. Really? Dude, I Damn. love long uh, self portraits. So this is another yeah. one. Not as good. The waterfall was kind of crap, but I was chilling yeah. right there. Maybe yeah. three seconds. So pretty cool. Yeah, man. Pretty, pretty cool. So these, this was, I don't really like this shot. I don't really know why I mm-hmm. kept it. This mm-hmm. was maybe like. I don't know, a fucking minute exposure, but it's cool, eh? Because like how yeah. it was, it was blue hour, but because of all the lights in the background, it oh, made yeah. the sky pink. I think I remember watching that video where you were doing that. Yeah, blue hour photography. That was yeah. a while ago. Mm-hmm. This year, like 10 seconds. Okay, that's enough, David. That's enough showing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, dude, this screen share thing is pretty cool. I've yeah. Never, how do I, your screen is resume share, new share? Yeah, there should be like, there share. was, that's, Stop there share. you go. Yeah. So, yeah, so what, with long exposure i find is just like when you get your composition down and you just yes. kind of just keep trying keep trying it's like it it's, you get hooked on it oh Cause like dude, I, you do yeah because i found i found when i was doing the the like the star trails and stuff yeah me and another friend of mine i got another friend of mine into doing like long longer exposure photography and he has like a rebel t5i something yeah like that. man yeah so he, he but he did the like a um a black magic or not black magic uh black lantern the the mod onto some like the canon stuff okay so he has a had like a bunch of different things where he could set up a timer and set up a bulb setting for like 45 minutes and just nice. leave it. Um, i would rather that i would rather yeah. that so yeah. i don't have to touch anything just yeah boop. yeah man but it's like it's so scary because like you don't know right like as exactly you're yeah to like, it, you're like that that photo that i showed you yeah. the four. 45 minutes it took me 45 minutes to take the photo and then yeah. it took my camera another 45 minutes to actually develop Bro. the photo and oh my god process it and you're probably just sitting there like did this even save did exactly it? and wow. literally we, we like we as soon as we were done that like had the fire i stopped the shutter and everything and um i was just like well time to walk back <laughs> up and we were just kind of like 
hanging out in like one of the common rooms and everything. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like there waiting for my camera and huddled. Everyone's huddled around it until yeah, I yeah. finally did it 45 minutes later. So wow. Yeah. And what if you turn the camera off? Would that fuck it up? I uh, it okay. So it I tried it before and it didn't fuck it up. Okay. But I feel like when you when you turn off the camera at that time, you right. run the risk of like either one corrupting it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Or possibly something happens with the photo and it doesn't process correctly. So, so I just usually leave it. You see, you're smart because I wouldn't have known. Oh, did it say like processing? Yes. On, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then that's good. Instead of it just being black, like I, I'd be like, oh, it didn't work. Shut off. And yeah. Then, yeah. That's, then that's good to keep in mind, actually. Oh, uh, back to like the mirrorless and like and mirrored thing. Yeah. One thing that I've that I've been playing around with a lot recently is putting film lenses onto my camera, my digital camera. Can you you can do that? Yeah, you can get what? you can get adapters for it. Oh, adapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So That's I have I have a Nikon lens, a and then a like a Pentax lens. Yeah, they're yeah. both full manual. Really. Aperture and everything. There's one that I'm I want to do this little experiment where I make a a set of like mock kind of um what's the word uh, what's the word um anamorphic style lenses yeah, yeah where yeah. like i open them up um kind of like so what with each there's like in each element a lot of them on the rim on the rim of each element there's like a black type of um lining okay which is just kind of like black paint it's mm-hmm. to prevent light from bouncing inside inside the lenses yeah yeah yep yep so what i was thinking of doing is is opening it up in each of those elements, taking some acetone and then rubbing it off. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then another thing that you can do is that instead of painting it black on the inside of the, of the, of the lens, you paint it um, orange okay. or blue, that type of style. So then what you start getting is that um, a lot of lens flares you're getting will start right. turning out to be like orange or blue. Oh, sick. Yeah. sick and then sick, what sick, you do sick. is then you put in a little aperture ring in it. And that's the the shape of an anamorphic style, like so that it gets like the, the light, the out of focus light, the bokeh and everything. Yeah, becomes a lot more like oval and everything. Interesting. Wow, dude. That's so nice. carry, creating like not exactly anamorphic because anamorphic the way it works that is it stretches the image. Okay. That's how you get the. That's how you get lights to become very oval. Okay. So what what is anamorphic? Because like so, I'm, I'm still kind of like yeah. So okay. So here, let me let me just. Is, does that just mean wide angle lens? Like no, I, no, 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 okay, no, no, not at all. Okay, so pretend okay. like this. This is a sharpener, but pretend this is your lens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the way that a regular lens is, it's it's spherical. Okay. Yeah. The way an anamorphic style will work is that you have a sp- a spherical lens, mm-hmm. but the elements are kind of like square on the inside. Okay. Okay. But the way that they are is that they'll squeeze the image. So you you see me right now, and I look normal. Mm-hmm. When you squeeze an image, my head will start to become a lot like, like, like the dis- squ- distortion. Like, yeah. It, it yeah, distorts yeah. us so that my, I become looking a lot taller, Yeah, like squibble, but I also yeah. look a lot, a lot thinner. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Exactly. But yeah. like, but you'll notice that it, it looks off. Yes, so what you yes. do in post is that you stretch that image to go back to being, uh, Normal. going like, like a 19 by 20 by 10, 80 type of aspect sure, ratio, sure, 16 sure, by sure. nine. Sure. And then what happens then is that everything in the image starts to distort this way. Yes. It makes everything look normal again. Mm-hmm. Minus you'll know you you can like pick out anamorphic because the people like when you look at someone you'll be like he looks normal but a little something looks off. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like it, but it 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 looks more cinematic. Right. When you and then when you flash a light, you'll notice that the light one <laughs> flares a lot more because it's going to be the way the light bends in an anamorphic is different than the way that it does in a spherical. Okay. And then you'll notice that the light becomes stretched. So, okay. so to end, because I'm, I'm familiar with distortion and what that does, does anamorphic yeah. lenses, do they just not have distortion essentially? No, no, no. They still have distortion like a regular oh, okay. lens would do. Okay. But it's just the way that they, that light acts in it and everything is different than the way than a spherical lens. Is okay. it more cinematic? Because I feel like, aren't they yeah. expensive anamorphic lenses? Oh, very expensive. But you're going to be, okay. but if you're going to be using anamorphic, you're going to be going for the whole film that's going to be shot on anamorphic. Right. Okay. You're not going to be mixing anamorphic with, with spherical it's, lenses right, unless right, like right. you really want to try. Okay. Um, but when you do, you notice a difference. Mm-hmm. Especially with like the out of focus, like in lights and everything, you'll notice a major difference. Like 
So it's yes. more cinematic, essentially. Exactly. More lenses. Is it because yeah. like there's less distortion, or just the way the distortion looks? Is it's, the, different? it's it's the way the distortion looks. Okay, I, I so, have to see it to like mm-hmm. to know it. Oh yeah, I'll do some research. Oh, on that. That's oh really cool. one thing. One thing is look up. Look up. Um, Film Riot does a lot of animorphic okay. style. Okay. So sick. if you look up some like uh, short films and everything, yeah. they have like oh, most of their short films are shot on anamorphic because the direct the director of Film Riot, Ryan Connolly, and everything, he absolutely loves anamorphic. Mm-hmm. so and he has like a bunch of stuff on what they look like and how like like there's one thing if you want to know big teller mm-hmm. um a video that i watched they were testing lenses for a recent short film that he was shooting okay and they were testing it like regular cine spherical lenses and then they had a set of anamorphics too so you can see the difference between a spherical lens and an anamorphic interesting because they were testing whether they wanted to make it spherical or they wanted to use anamorphic yeah i'm gonna watch a video on that like a side-by-side comparison yeah so do they sell anamorphic lenses like canon l series lenses are they like some next brand they're they're another type of brand interesting yeah they're not even like canon or sony like no they would be they would be like a dedicated brand wow yeah but they work for those cameras you'd need like an adapter or something or you could a lot of times um or they're for the big boy cameras. <laughs> kind of like for the big boy cameras because like they would they would use a lot of like PL mounts. Or right, right. I, I forget what the other mount is, but PL mounts like the type of mount where it's like not really, not like, you know how when you put in a regular lens, you twist it, locks in place. Mm-hmm. A PL mount type of lens is that you put it in, twist it, but then you kind of like screw it in place a little bit like okay. with like actual like like Allen wrenches and everything or interesting, like, interesting. Uh, like an actual clip and stuff like that. Interesting. So so the, the reason why that is, is because um, a lot of times when you're on a film set and everything, mm-hmm. um, the focus puller either would be would be remote, so it would have like a, a screen, a little exactly, a remote exactly. focus puller where they can like be off out of the way of the camera, exactly, but still be yeah. able to pull, pull focus. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have the budget for that, yeah, you yeah, yeah. be with the camera operator. Right. So a lot of the times that if you are going to be either to the left or to the right, you want to be able to turn the lens so that you can see it. Mm-hmm. So that's what, that's why PL mounts a little bit more so that you can set it to like different angles. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So cool. So yeah, that's so, so anamorphic lenses are like strictly like cinematography lenses. Like can pretty you, much. You, you can take photos. You, you can, you can oh, take you photos can with them. Photos. Okay. But you just need to, you need to uh, like, re like re squeeze it or de squeeze exactly. it and everything. So you so, can do it. So like, do people like, I don't want to say <laughs> us, but like, do like average Joes have anamorphic lenses? Or are these like yeah. just, oh, they do. Okay. They can like you, there, there are companies that make like affordable anamorphic Interesting. lenses Interesting. and you can get, they can make them for Canon mounts or Nikon mounts or Sony mounts, things like that. That's but sick. it's not going to be offered by like Canon or Sony. Exactly. Or, exactly. Like they're like third party type of stuff. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. Dang, man. Well, I feel like, you know, it won't be too much longer because it is two o'clock. And I know, I know you said you got Yeah, I think I can go a little too. bit longer. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I feel like we're, we're we're almost done, anyways. This is like yeah, fucking great podcast, bro. Like, this is the this is <laughs> sick, man. I'll definitely yeah. do more of these. Yeah, no um, cool. I, I I wish there was like a thing that told me how long this podcast was. I'm surprised um, there's there's I'm surprised there's no thing that says like how long you've been going for. Yeah, oh, it's well. not a, it, it's not a big deal, but like yeah, yeah, man, no dope. Um, I feel like then all right, we can probably like wrap it up. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. I guess like what are like the final. Maybe like, well, okay, let's, let's do this. What's some like final advice you would give to yourself if you were starting your photo video journey, you know, your three <sighs> years ago, whatever. It could be anything, okay. bro, mental, physical, like. It's, uh, you know what I would do? I would say get out more, just carry your camera around with you. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I have, I usually carry my film camera around now, like 24 nice. seven. Nice, nice. Um, and another thing is that, even now I still get caught up with the type of camera that I have. Yeah. Don't get caught up in it. Cause if you, if you want to pull up my Instagram real quick, yeah, there's man. one photo. Let me just, shot. I'll do the, uh, actually a screen share now that we know how to do that. Mm-hmm. That works better. Let's do that. There's one photo that I still think is one of my, like my best photos. Um, and it's like, it's not shot on my like Sony or film. It's shot on like my D3100. So it's shot on not a great camera, but this yeah. Is so dope. go, so go down, up a bit more. Okay, the one. This is a really nice one. Yeah, that's actually shot. Actually, click on that one real quick. Yeah, I like this one. 
guess what guess what um Focal lens is shot on guess, guess Some, oh, you can something you can, wide bro i can see the distortion like yeah. a 14 like a, yeah you know. can see you can see the the hashtags now oh no oh yeah. no I, bro i didn't even i swear to god i didn't look at that <laughs> yo i'm getting good at this bro i was like yeah like a 12 to 14 you can just tell like the way like yeah. you're super tall here everything's kind of bowed in here yeah yeah so no, that's shot on a 14 mil nice and yeah I that's guess. like just that there's actually- me <laughs> <laughs> okay Sick. yeah no i like that man like a golden hour kind of flex mm-hmm. it's dope that actually that was that you know how dark that was actually pretty dark eh yeah well i was gonna yeah. say what's the aperture on this because usually wide angle lenses aren't too good right? like, 2.8 really that's clean yeah, yeah. wow that's nice yeah. what, what the, lens is that like a uh broken on 14 mil two, like it's, it's, a, it's a prime 14 yeah yeah oh it's a prime. sick yeah. 2.8 oh that's really cool yeah that's really sick so if you go down a bit the white the the snow one the that one the, yep that one that one shot on a nikon d3100 and i absolutely love that photo what bro what is this is that into like the abyss like is, is that a no, wall is that just snow that's, that's actually a football field but it's just caked yeah like in snow or fog snow that's sick yeah that's lit. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty eerie actually. Yeah. But that's one of my favorites. Dude, that's sick. Yeah. Then, I like this. Is this film? No, no, no. That's actually shot on the D3100. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, little lady. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was, there's, I have two photos. One where it's like, she's not in it. And then another one where I'm like, oh, there's someone coming. I got to be quick about this. Trust. Do you, I don't problem, know how many times. The problem with that? that one though, is that, is that that was like 12 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, like no, but it's nice though, bro. It's nice. Like you can see yeah. the shadow work you're playing with the architecture. Yeah. It's nice. So dude, I like it, man. I feel like this should be like a thing I should do with like every future podcast. Now that we <laughs> just pull up the Instagram and, and look, yeah. this is dope. I like this. If you, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to keep going, go ahead. I can, I can quickly put in the ones that I've kind of taken out as archived. Yeah, dude. Sure, man. How about, how about if, if you can pull up some of your favorite photos and we'll kind of go over it, like why you like it and you know, why yeah. you think, Okay, so the, the, another one. If you go up a little bit, yep. The that one, the one, the one with the uh, that one right there, that one. That's also one of my favorites. Yeah, bro, I like this one. This one's super chill. S- story behind that one is that I was hanging. There's me again. <laughs> <laughs> I was hanging half off of a hammock at that time. Sick. I literally fell out of my hammock and I looked forward and I saw that and I was like, that was kind of cool. And I grab. I just had my fifty mil on my on my can on my Sony, and I was yeah. like. I was I just had it down by like the hammocks with me. I was like, nice. oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you so, need some reach for this, I feel like. Yeah. You can see like the compression because like that doesn't look too far, but I bet you that was like yeah. actually really far. Oh, about- I, there there was one day, there was one day where I like I was like, uh, I bet my friends like, I bet you I can swim there and back in like seven minutes. Really? And they were like, Yeah, go ahead. And then it was like I did it in eight, but by the time oh, that sick. I was back, I was like holy crap it's far eh? far it's yeah, far for swimming yeah. at least yeah. yeah people people like they don't understand the uh the thing of compression man like how it can really just yeah. smush everything together like this yeah. doesn't look too far but you can mm-hmm. tell bro mm-hmm. like if that was shot on like a te- that 14 roken on holy mm-hmm. crap oh yeah that would have been far yeah sick man yeah if you want to yeah. pull up some of your uh, i don't know if you want to do a screen share or whatever yeah sure here I'll, i can here or, let or, me or, see if i can let me see if i can quickly yeah, and yeah. Organize Instagram. your stuff first. You don't pull up any nudes or anything like that. You know, <laughs> do whatever. Yeah, exactly. Here. Okay. Um, do you want me to stop share? Like, I can keep the share on if you want me to. Just like. No, I here. can. I can. I can share now. Okay. So I got it. I got it running. Okay. So. Um, here, right there. Okay. So, um, this one, I'm really proud of. That's sick. This is with a, I was testing out a film lens on here. Oh, um, sick. So since this photo, I've gotten so much better at actually making sure I have pinpoint focus. I wish, bro. I still need to focus. I really need to work on that with my film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. So this one, this is at 12 o'clock. Okay. Like 12 a.m. 12 a.m. Yeah. Like, like midnight. Yeah. Midnight. What? So oh, street I'm, light. Okay. So there's this little bike area on campus where for some reason they have the brightest LEDs. Right. And I was literally just going around like on all these different bikes. And I saw this one that was a Peugeot bike. Mm. And I was like, that's kind of cool. That's actually, that's usually a car company. 
Okay. And I was like, so I was like, I decided to get that. It's a little blurry. Oh, um, it looks like, pretty sharp to me. <laughs> I just did. But like recently, like if I were to go back, oh, I can't, I can't show you that one yet. Can I? You can, okay. you can, what do you, like, what do you, are you just seeing the, the I'm Instagram? seeing the bike right now. I'm just yeah, I'm okay. looking at a bike. So I'm getting a lot better at like actually making sure that they're in focus. Yep. Like, um, some of them recently have been like really good. Um, this one. So I really like this portrait. Yeah, it's clean. Um, but I really loved this one out of the whole role. Mm -hmm. This one was my favorite. Cause I, I was on the way to class and I was like, okay, wait a minute. I saw that like the top of the building. I was like, that'd be kind of cool just to play with negative space a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, the one after that, I really, I really, this one? that one, that's my yeah. favorite. That one, that. that one, I was saying to my friend, Andy, that's my roommate, the same one that was in the first photo. Yeah. And I was like, just go out the window for a second. I'll be right back. So I walked out of our apartment right went down to like, there's a path that runs along the side of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me take a photo of you. Um, just kind of look off a bit. Right. Funny thing with this one though, is that it's cropped in a bit more. Okay. So even now you can like still kind of see like how sharp it is. Right. So, um, and then nailed that focus. That's sick. This one was a good cool. one too. Is that a contacts camera? No, it's a Nikon. But is it a, is it a film camera? Yeah. yeah. What do, so what it's like, your, I'm like, going to into depth, but like, what are your like takes on, uh, on, on those like the more, uh, the Point compact shoots? film film camera oh they're great they're great right they're i was great. looking at like the contacts one like they have autofocus yeah. they're great the built-in flash that would be my next mm -hmm. one yeah they're, they're great dope, for eh? when you want to just have like a camera on next to you on the fly and everything yeah. yeah and they just they just like perform eh? yeah i don't know what it is about them right right but like most point and shoots nowadays like they're good but like mm -hmm. you can't really get much out of them exactly exactly but it, those, it's not a full frame reason, it's not a full yeah. frame but it the, is but or the, isn't? the point, the point and shoots here. Yeah. Oh, the still, contacts still, is a full frame. It's still, it's still, it's still when you, okay. So when you're, when you're actually shooting film, the reason why full, the reason why full frame gets its name, it's from 35 millimeter film. Interesting. So the sensor size is for digital is 35 millimeters. Interesting. So you it's probably, the same size probably as kill, a regular. Kill this, probably kill the screen share now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, um, yeah, the Sick. yeah the the size of the size of a film is thirty five millimeters. Right. So you're going to be getting no matter what type of film you shoot, mm -hmm. you could be oh, shooting. Interesting. You can be shooting the cheapest brand of film. Right. Compared to like the most expensive like cine still type of film, mm -hmm. you would be getting still thirty five millimeters full frame. Interesting. Because that's you're using the full frame is thirty five millimeters. Okay. As opposed to like if you're going to be using a medium format, that's where things start to become opposite. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's like, now you're using a six by six or a six by seven type of frame. Okay. So you're using a lot bigger. And you're those gonna, are a lot more expensive at like the medium format. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're going to the be film more expensive. They take is huge, right? The film they take would be about, it's okay. So regular 35 millimeter film is about that size. Right. Okay. Um, for actual full frame would be about that size for the medium sorry format? sorry medium format yeah would right, be about right. that size right um there are different caveats with that so now with full with a medium format depending on the type of camera you have um some will shoot six by six some will shoot six by seven okay if you're shooting six by six medium format you don't need to worry about your composition as much right or sorry you still need to worry about your composition i'm talking about portrait and landscape type of type of stuff right because it's a square yeah, it's a square. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you're shooting six by seven, you can still you still are able to do landscape and portrait because it's six by seven. But you're not as can, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but yeah. I want to I want to shoot on medium format, but I don't have one. I, don't I was gonna one. say I feel like a lot of like in the film world, which I'm like just starting off. Like mm -hmm. I feel like it's like you get like a you know a, what, what would you call, like a D, uh, DSLR film? Is that what you consider? Yeah, yeah. It's still it's still a DSLR. And so a DSLR film or not? Like, sorry, not not a DSLR. It's an SLR. SLR an SLR film, and then I feel like after yeah. that, it's it's like the digital. With that, you can still have the contacts. It's, is that a digital film camera? Is that what you call it? No, it's still it. Mm, I would call that kind of just like a, a point compact shoot, a yeah, little compact. point shoot, compact, okay, compact. Yeah. and then I feel like it's like boom, then you get compact, and then talk a little bit about like like I keep seeing like the Leica M6, like I keep yeah. seeing that. Is that okay? Is that a SLR two or is that like a next? Yes, thing that or? that's also an SLR. Okay, so depending SLR. depend depending on the Leica. Okay, um, we have a Leica in the shop at the moment, like at the Sick. store. Sick. Um, they're pricey and, though. Eh? I heard oh, the pricey. They are, they are. Like, um, like what three grand for like the the no. Camera? Well, some of them, yeah. Some, some really good ones, yes, 100%. You'll be getting okay. like a lot. The one that we're selling is about a grand. 
Right. Um, so that an average Leica M6 or just a Leica would be around like the one to three mark. You'd yeah. Say. Okay. Yeah. That's and that's not um, you know. The biggest thing about Leica is the type of look you're getting. Right. And right. the glass. So Leica glass is really sharp. Okay. When you get when you dial in your focus and everything, and yeah. it's good. It is sharp. It's sharp. You also, okay. you also get a certain look because as much as so okay. So when you're working with film, mm-hmm. say compared to from Kodak Portra to Fujifilm Pro H or 400H things like that. Right. Portra is gonna be running a lot, usually a lot more warmer, while Fujifilm would be running a lot colder. Interesting. There's also something to be said about the type of lenses you're using. Okay. So different lenses will give you different looks. So that's why a lot of times you'll see in film, like actual like video, the reason why a lot of a lot of like um, movies are going to be putting so much emphasis on the type of a type of um, lenses they're using is because they want a certain look. Okay. So same thing with that goes with regular cameras. So the lenses that go for for Leica, just they're built so well. Mm-hmm. And they just are so sharp and they just have this nice look to them. Okay. I can't really explain it. Like it's, yeah. a lot of, it's like, it's a really nice vintage type of look. So is it with the colors and the hues too, would you say? Exactly. Kind of yeah. everything. So, right? so it's the way, it's the way lenses will react with light and everything. Interesting. Okay. And that's why people would go for a like or more expensive camera opposed to a, uh, a mm-hmm. more consumer, you know, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. Yeah. Interesting, man. That's cool. I feel like. Yeah, I kind of feel like we touched on like everything, bro. We went, <laughs> bro, you went deep, man. Yeah, that is, no that, is, that is super cool. So yeah, guys, I think we'll finish it on that note because I'm yeah. actually starving. I, I fast, yeah. so like I, bro, I haven't eaten anything. Yeah, dude. I need to get something to eat too. So uh, yeah, the banana was, wasn't yeah. enough, bro. Not enough, not enough at all. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're going to finish there. I hope you, that was of value and resource to you guys. Definitely check out Mike's. Michael, Mike, what do you? You can go either or. Okay, we'll just say I'm Mike, not too Michael. picky check out the uh instagram bro that will definitely be down below that's super cool guys and like mm-hmm. you know reach out i'm sure you're cool if anyone reaches out to you to ask you yeah because like you yeah, really no know worries. bro you no will worries. Be, you will be my film coach <laughs> like anytime i have a question i'm like yo yeah. mike's mike's the guy go ahead and send me a us. message sick okay go guys so send me a message we will finish it there i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Thanks for being on, bro. You were the first. No dude, this was awesome. Like you were like the catalyst. Like I'm actually going to like <laughs> really try to pursue this whole you know, yeah. remote podcast flex because just hopefully they have mics, bro. That's yeah. my own yeah. hope, bro. Because like, yeah. anyway, so I'll finish it there. Cheers, bro. Um, yeah. Okay. How do I do? I guess I just like end meeting and we'll just. I guess. Say, yeah. Okay, bro. I appreciate it, man. We'll talk soon. No then, worries. Okay? Yeah. Hey, brother. Thanks so much. Let me, let me know if you want to shoot during the week. I'm yeah, going to be Yeah. When you, yeah, when you heading back? I'm gone Saturday. You're leaving free, Saturday. Yeah, I'm free like midday to like evening tomorrow. Uh, dude, yeah, maybe I feel like you and I should get like a solo shoot. Like just you and yeah. me, man, go somewhere outdoors. Yeah, like we're no in Ajax. Maybe we'll drive somewhere. I'll, I'll pull out the camera, get some vlogging and stuff, and we'll, uh, mm-hmm. we'll get it going. Yeah, no worries. Okay. All right, bro. We'll keep in touch. I have your number yeah. now. And uh, perfect. Yeah, dude. I'll sh- so let's say that. Let's maybe aim for tomorrow. I'll yeah. uh, I'll shoot you a message like later in the evening and we'll like confirm some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Awesome, yeah. bro. Talk soon. See ya. See you, dude.